It's Wild Card Wednesday with Crafting Cousins. What are we up to today? Stick around and we'll find out. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be doing a B-theme tier tray. I'm going to list all of the items I'm using up front. First of all, I'm going to use three of these wooden scraps. They are about three and a half inches by five and a half inches and under an inch thick. I'm going to use one of these styrofoam cones that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some jute rope, I got mine at Hobby Lobby. These beads that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were marked 75% off. One wooden tag, I got mine at Walmart. Some of this nylon cording. Some jute twine. A wooden birdhouse from the Dollar Tree. This scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. This wooden frame that I got from the Dollar General when it was marked down to 50 cents. This market calendar that I got from the Dollar Tree. This watering can, it came from Hobby Lobby when it was 90% off last year. Two of these corn skewers, I got them from Walmart. This 7 8 inch round wooden dowel, you could also use the handle from a plunger from the Dollar Tree. This wooden mason jar sign, I got it from the Dollar Tree and it was 50% off after Christmas. Some poster letters from the Dollar Tree. These word stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby. These bright yellow ball mums that I got from Walmart. Some letter stickers. I ended up only using the black ones on the left top. Some of these B stickers. The ones on top came from Hobby Lobby. The ones at the bottom are by Creative Memories. Some wired ribbon. I did not use all of them. A few of these regular ribbons in various widths. Some black, white, and yellow chalk paint. Some black, yellow, and white acrylic paint. Some Mod Podge. A few of these tumbling tower blocks that I got at the Dollar Tree and I used them to prop things up higher on my tray. This is a sign that I just had in my collection. It came from Hobby Lobby last year when it was marked down. And finally, at the end of that long, lengthy list, these two metal bees. One came from the Dollar General, one came from Hobby Lobby at different times. First thing I'm going to do is remove this twine from the mason jar. You can either reuse it later on another project, but I'm not going to use it here. And then I'm going to give it a good sanding and remove all of that glitter from the front and most of the picture as well. Then I'm coming to the back and I'm going to remove this sticker on the back, actually a couple of stickers, and they were stuck on there so well I ended up just having to scrape them off with my Cricut tool. And then I came back in and sanded it off so there would be no sticky residue. Now I'm going in with the yellow chalk paint and I'm going to paint all of the edges and what was the back will now be the front and I'll paint that as well. Then we'll just set it aside to dry. And once it's dry, I'm coming back in with acrylic paint and painting it in this much brighter yellow color. The same areas as before. And then for the bag, I'm just going to take a piece of this craft paper and I'm going to trace around it. And then I'll cut that out just using my scissors. Then I'll use a little spray adhesive on the back here. And then we'll cover up what used to be the front and you won't even know that it was a Christmas piece. Now I'm putting my poster letters on. Of course, we're spelling home. I'm going to line it up first at the bottom and get my M on and my E. And then I will use that to help align the other two letters. I wanted a big B to be my O and I couldn't find one. So I am going to use the poster letter O. And then I'll just take the biggest B that I do have and put it right in the center of that O. That was the best solution I could come up with. And then I'm going to take this little scrap piece of ribbon that I had. That's all that was left on the roll. And I'll just pinch it in the middle and I'm going to make kind of a 
bow tie bow. And I'll just take a piece of this dotted grow, grow grain ribbon and I'm going to tie it right around the middle and just apply it with a little hot glue right there to the left top of my little mason jar. And I'm going to take one of the smaller bees and put it in the center. I'll just put a little hot glue there and that'll dress up the center part as well. And I think that's very striking. I love how it came out. It is bright and cheerful and very beautiful. This project is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to take off this little hanger at the top first. I will replace it later. Then I'm going to remove this sticker off the back. I just put a little heat on it. And then I'm going to sand it really well on the front and the back. And then I'm going to give it a good coat of this cashew chalk paint by Waverly. It only took one coat, it gave great coverage. And I did the back there. And then I'm going to take this little honey sign that's on the back of the calendar. I'll just trim it up with my paper trimmer. You do not have to have one of those, of course. And it fit almost perfectly on the front there with just a little margin around it. I'm going to place a nice coating of Mod Podge, not too thick. I really did go back and remove some of this, guys, but I didn't want to bore you on camera with that. And then I'll just spritz the back of my picture with a little water and then place it down carefully on the block, lining it up and smoothing it down. I just use some wax paper so that I can move it around and not tear it. Then I'll replace that little picture holder at the top. And then I'm going to come in with some of my ribbons and I'm just going to tie a nice bow at the top. It did take me a couple of times on this one. And that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to place a daily scripture on the top of my little picture holder. The first thing I'm going to do for this project is take my wooden tag and give it about a coat and a half of white Waverly chalk paint on all the sides edges back and front and as a bonus project i'm going to take one of these wooden beads that has little grooves around it and one of these dowels the smaller one that was in a pack at walmart and i'm going to cut off just a few inches because i'm going to be making a honey dipper i'll just sharpen it in my little pencil sharpener and that just makes it easier to glue it on I'll put a little hot glue on the end there and then stick it down into my bead. And then we have a honey dipper. I think that turned out cute. I'm going to make a tassel. I'm going to use my Cricut scraper. You can use a piece of cardboard or whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to wrap this twine around it about 20 times. Then I'm going to come in with some yellow ribbon and some black ribbons and I'm going to wrap each of those around my Cricut tool about four times each because the ribbon is a lot wider than the twine but it gives a lot of color and dimension to our tassel then I'm going to slip a piece of twine right behind all of my ribbon and twine that I have on my Cricut tool and I'm going to tie a knot at the top. And then I'll just slide all of my ribbons off and line it up and evenly as I can. Come in with another piece of twine about oh half inch from the top and wrap it around several times and tie a really good knot. And then we'll just cut off the excess. And that's kind of how you make a tassel. And then you come in and you clip the ends of all the twine and all the ribbon and open it up. Sometimes you have to trim a bit off, make sure it's even. And you play with it and fluff it and you get a really cute tassel. Now I'm going to work on that tag a little more. It's dry and I'm going to put on the word blessed here at the bottom. You could always write it in with a marker. I just wanted to use the sticker so I wanted to make this a quick and easy project. And then I'll put one of my bees at the top, attach it with a little hot glue to make sure it sticks. And we have be blessed on our tag. 
I'm going to use some of this cording that I had and I'm going to use about a 36 inch piece, fold it in half, stick the loop through my tag and then pull my twine back through it. I call that a slip knot, but I'm not sure that's really right. I'm going to slide on one of my beads and then I tried to mesh the two ends together because this nylon cording will melt nicely, but it didn't work too well. So I'm going to tie a knot right at the top of that bead, and then I will cut off one of the sides of this cording. I want my beads to be able to go down on the, on the cording really well and not be so difficult. And then I just start placing my beads on in a pattern I used almost all of the colors in the package, and by the end, I had used half of the package of beads. I could have painted some wooden beads, but I thought these were just cute, and that made the process a lot faster by having the beads already painted in the coordinating colors. These are actually plastic, but I didn't mind that at all. Then when I get to the end, I'm just going to tie that off, and at first I'm just leaving a loop here. And you could stop there and this whole thing would be complete. But I'm just going to take the end of the beads here, the little loop, and the loop from the tassel, and I'm going to tie a nice knot, tying the two pieces together, and just cut off the excess. And that's our beaded tassel. I love how this turned out. I think it's so cute. And here it is laying on my table. I do apologize for the lighting, but I hope you learned a little something. For this project, I'm going to be making a faux set of stacked books. I'm going to use these one by fours that I bought, which are really about three and a half inches wide. And I will paint one of them with white chalk paint, one of them with yellow chalk paint, and one of them with black chalk paint. And I will paint all of the edges, the both flat sides, front and back, you could call it, and give them a really good coverage. And then I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to have the black one on the bottom. I just picked the best sides to be my outside. And then I'll place that yellow one right down there on top. So we have a yellow, white, and black stack. And then I just picked out some more of the words that I liked from these stickers. The first one says grateful, and I'm going to put that towards the end, but with a little margin on the end. And then I'm going to put loved and smooth that one down. And you could always put Mod Podge on top of your stickers to make sure they stay on. And the last one says beautiful. And then I'm coming in with this beautiful ribbon that looks a lot like a honeycomb pattern. And I'm just going to cut off a piece and glue it right around my stack of books. And I had so many cobwebs y'all today with this glue gun. Because I have used several sticks of glue today. And I'm going to turn under my edge there so that it's nice and finished. And I couldn't leave it alone so I'm going to place some of this black ribbon that is thin straight down the middle of it. I like lots of color in my projects. And then we'll glue that there on the bottom. The next thing I'm going to do is place on some of the smaller flat bees that I had in these stickers. And I'm just choosing three different ones. And they're turned in two different directions. And I'm going to put those right on my books right before the words. And you could stop there, but of course I just had to use this bumblebee ribbon. I'm just going to make a simple bow, making two loops on each side. I just wrapped it around, guys. I didn't do anything special. And I pinched it in the middle. I'm going to use a little bit of that same black and white check ribbon and tie around it. Just in a knot. And then I'm going to cut off the excess. Use a little hot glue. Well, of course, you got to fluff it first and cut off those ends, dovetail them, and make them look cute. Then we'll glue it down to our book. 
towards the back a little bit and it is a really big bow if that bothers you you could do something smaller but I wanted to use this ribbon and I'm going to take another one of those small B stickers not the flat ones but the raised ones and I'm just going to put it right there in the center of my bow and dress it up just a little bit more and there's my set of faux mini stacked books I love these so much. This is probably my favorite project in all of this. And if you don't like a big bow, well, just make it smaller or use some different ribbon. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and YouTube will let you know every time we upload new content. We upload videos four days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. For this project, I'm just going to be painting this little birdhouse in our bee theme. And I know bees don't live in birdhouses, but I just had to have a birdhouse on there because I just love these little wooden birdhouses that you get at the Dollar Tree. After I gave my birdhouse a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint over the entire thing. I came back in with this yellow chalk paint and I'm going to paint, I guess you'd say the body of the house. I'm just going to go around and paint all of the sides and the front in the yellow chalk paint. Then I came in with my black chalk paint and I'm going to paint the bottom edge. You'll see in just a minute when I flip this over and I'm going to paint also the bottom of the entire birdhouse which is kind of like the basis on with the black chalk paint as well then i'm just going to trace out my roof on this cute little bee scrapbook paper i got it at hobby lobby recently and i'm just going to cut out these little rectangles trace out the second one do the same thing use a little mod podge not too much because the paper is kind of thin and then we'll apply our bee paper to the roof of our little birdhouse kind of like wallpaper and of course i had to add a couple of bees i couldn't leave them off of the front so i'm just going to attach them there one to the front and one to the roof easement and there's our finished piece i love this one so much so simple so easy I love these little watering cans and I got it when it was 90% off last year at Hobby Lobby, but it was a weird color and I'm going to go in or I did go in and paint it with two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. Here I am just touching it up a little bit because somehow I lost the first footage. Now I'm just going to make a very simple bow by wrapping it around my hand about four times. And I dropped one of the ribbons, so I had to go back and rearrange it. But that's basically what I did. And then I'm just going to use a black chenille stem, half of one actually. And I'm going to twist it right around the very middle of my little bow here. And we'll just give it a good twist. And we'll use the excess of that to attach it to the handle of our can. And of course, every bow needs a lot of fluffing. Pull out each of those loops and make it look good. Trim off the ends, cut them at a diagonal. And the more you work with it, well, the better it looks. Now I'm just going to twist it right around my can here. And I'll just trim up the ends of that chenille stem with my wire cutters and I'm going to keep it really simple I'm going to place the word joyful on one side again using those stickers you could write the word kind or whatever you would like on your project with a marker if you like and I'm putting thankful on the second side and of course I'm going to add some bees that is our theme today I'm going to use some different ones than I used on my other projects and that's pretty much it. That pretty much wraps up this project. You could do a lot more. You could paint it multicolored. But there it is sitting on my little pedestal. Looks a little funny for the ribbon from this angle. But it actually is quite charming. 
Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. For this project, I'm going to be making one of the mini rolling pins. I couldn't find any at my local store, so I bought this dowel at Walmart. It is 7 eighths inch around. And I'm just going to go in and paint it, first of all, with two coats of white Waverly chalk paint. I cut this dowel to about six and a half inches at first. I cut it on my four inch table saw that I got at Harbor Freight by just turning it when the blade started bogging down a little bit. Now I'm going to take my corn skewers. They happen to be the perfect color, so I'm not going to paint them. Also, they're kind of a rubbery finish. And I'm going to remove the pins from them. They would not stick down into my dowel. It was just too thick. And I'm just going to use hot glue to attach them to my dowel. And right as I was attaching the second one, I discovered that I had cut my dowel way too long. Six and a half inches is just too much. So I went back and I cut it again. I took out about an inch and a half. And so here is where it has been cut again. Honestly, you could probably do it at four inches and it would be just fine. And I'm going to put on the second side again with some hot glue. Then I'm taking these letters that I told you earlier I was going to use, and I'm going to put on the word KIND. I'm going to start at the end so it lines up perfectly with the D and then work my way across. And then I'm going to use one of these Bs, which is a little different than I had been using, and place one of those on because I need it to be flat because it's going on a rounded surface. And of course, you can always come back in with a little Mod Podge on top of your stickers to make sure they stay perfectly flush. Then I'm just taking a couple of my ribbons and I'm going to tie a simple shoestring bow here right on the end. And just cut off my ribbon. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. I love it so much, y'all. I think it's just cute as can be. And there it is on display. And no bee-themed tiered tray would be complete without a bee skeep. So I'm going to take my knife and cut off the top part of this cone and then simply start wrapping this twine around the cone. At first you go kind of slow and get it nice and attached and don't melt too much of the cone and you want to watch your way around but after the second row it actually goes pretty fast. I don't glue every bit of the string around. After I get past a certain point I just glue it when I feel like it's necessary and then just kind of work my way around and keep it as tight as possible. I don't want any of that white showing through. And you know what? You could paint it before you did this and it probably would be even easier. And then I'll just twist it right up onto the top and keep going until I get it kind of rounded, make a little loop at the top. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I'm going to take a length of my twine and I'm going to glue it end to end and make a circle and then I'll glue it right down onto my bee skeep. We'll just place it right there on the cone. And then I'm going to come in with my Jot Permanent Marker and I'm going to color that in. You could also paint it as well if you don't get good coverage. That's just another option. And of course, you've got to have some bees or this project just would not be complete. And I'll also use one of them to hide where my rope met there. And we'll dress it up. And later I'm going to come back and add a flower to the top, but that's pretty much it. And it turned out just like I wanted it to. I cannot wait to add it to the tray and show you everything that I've made. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, 
We hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!